In many applications in computer vision and machine learning, we are faced with very high dimensional data sets that contain multiple classes, where each class can be well approximated by a low dimensional subspace. The problem of clustering faces under varying illumination is one of them, where the set of all faces of one individual under all lighting conditions can be well approximated by a nine-dimensional subspace. And so, if you have multiple individuals, the data set can be well approximated by multiple uh, subspaces. More formally, the problem is the following. When it's given a data set that lies approximately in a union of subspaces, and without knowing the dimensions and with the data potentially being corrupted in various ways, what you would like to do is to find the segmentation of the data. So this is a problem that has been well studied over the past decade, and there are very nice algorithms that are able to solve this problem with very nice theoretical guarantees as to when the clustering is correct. But by and large, if you look at the data sets where it's been tested, they're mostly sort of a small mid-size of about a thousand data points at most. Recently, this has motivated the development of other algorithms uh, that uh, can handle large-scale data sets by using various heuristics, but there are no theorems that guarantee their correctness. So the goal of this work is precisely to develop algorithms uh, that are able to handle large-scale data sets and at the same time have theoretical guarantees. So before I describe you the method, let me tell you a little bit how currently uh, subspace clustering is done. First of all, notice that this is a clustering problem, but classical clustering methods such as k-means, which we just saw in the previous talk, are not applicable uh, because you have these subspaces that are intersecting with each other. So uh, after years of work, it, the community has converged on the fact of using a two-step approach where you first build an affinity matrix that measures the similarity between pairs of points and then you apply spectral clustering to it. However, the key challenge really is how do you go about building an affinity matrix that is really good? The reason again being that if you do it based on distance, uh, it's not going to work because you can have all of these points near the intersection that are close to each other but they're in different classes. So the question is how do you build an affinity that that really exploit this uh, multi-subspace structure. So the way this has been done is by exploiting a particular geometric property of data in a union of low dimensional subspaces, which is that points can always be expressed in terms of themselves. They can be written as linear combinations of themselves. And moreover, if you look at this uh, data point xj over there, because it lies in a plane, it actually can just be written as a linear combination of just two other points in its own plane. So what this means is that if you actually try to search among all possible linear combinations for those who are sparse, perhaps you can actually guarantee that those sparse solutions will give you connections to other data points in the data set that belong to the same group. And that's exactly what this very nice algorithm sparse subspace clustering does. Unfortunately, this sparse coding problem is NP-hard and very difficult to solve. So the traditional approach has been to relax the L0 norm that counts the number of non-zero entries by the L1 norm. And when you do that, uh, there's been a lot of very nice theories showing that you are guaranteed to give the correct connections. However, as I said earlier, when you solve it with C it's in practice, people have solved it with the CBX or with algorithms such as ADMM, the tests that have been done involve up to 640 data points. An alternative method, which is actually well known and very old in signal processing, is this method called orthogonal matching pursuit, that is a greedy method of selecting just one data point at a time to do sparse coding. By the fact that your uh, number of points that you select is very small in principle, uh, this is supposed to be scalable. However, to our surprise, it was only two years ago that for the first time someone tried to use OMP for subspace clustering. But the other question is whether we can extend the nice existing theory for L1 to the case of OMP for the purpose of subspace clustering. And those are exactly the two key contributions of this work, which is to have theorems for correctness as well as scaling uh, the OMP algorithm to 100,000 data points. In the next talk, you will actually see even half a million data points. So let me overview very quickly what this well-known OMP algorithm is. 
So you have to solve effectively a system of linear equations and you're searching for a sparse solution. So you take the data point xj and you build a residual and then you find the data point in the dictionary that is closest or that is most correlated with that residual and you select that point and you solve for its coefficient which is now a very efficient problem. Once you have obtained the first data point, you subtract it from the residual, and you now again select a second point that is the most correlated with that residual, and so on and so forth. So from a subspace clustering perspective, the key question is why does this method work in the sense of building connections only to other points in your own group? And you would expect that a sufficient condition would be that if at each step I always select another point from my own group, this method should work. And that's exactly what uh, our work has shown, that this algorithm uh, is guaranteed to give the correct connections, provided that this geometric condition is satisfied. What is this geometric condition? The quantity on the left measures how similar two subspaces are. And evidently, you would expect that if the subspaces are very separated, it should be easier to cluster. And conversely, if the subspaces are very close to each other, it should be harder to cluster. And that quantity mu on the left is really something like the cosine of the angles between the subspaces. So it is capturing exactly your geometric intuition. The quantity on the uh, right-hand side uh, R measures how well distributed the data is inside the subspaces. So in particular, if the data is well spread out, the radius would be large, and if the data is sort of spread out in one specific direction, that radius would be small. So again, the theorem is very nicely capturing the geometry of the problem. But now, are these conditions satisfied in practice? So how likely are they to be satisfied? So to verify that, you uh, do a random model where you just draw n subspaces at random, and then you draw uh, the data from each one of the subspaces with equal probability. And now you ask, does this OMP method succeed and with what probability? So the theorem says that OMP is guaranteed to give the correct connections with overwhelming probability, going to one as the size of the data grows, provided simply that the subspaces are sufficiently low dimensional. So the dimension of each subspace is small compared to the dimension of the ambient space. So the only difference with prior work in this area based on L1 minimization is what is the probability. And so we do a little bit worse. Our, our probability, uh, the difference between L1 and OMP is on the order of the dimension of the subspace, little d, divided by the number of data points. So to illustrate that, this is a uh, evaluation. The y-axis is clustering accuracy, and the x-axis is the number of data points. So the red curve is the accuracy of the classical L1 minimization algorithm. And notice that it stops there, because that's the largest data set for which we can run it, which is on the order of about 7,000 data points. And see, our method does worse by a few percentage points. But we can increase now the number of data points and when we get to about 100,000, we are able to do as well and if not better than the L1 minimization. And that is done now uh, by doing or being two orders of magnitude faster. So the y-axis here is the running time and the x-axis is again the number of data points. And notice that L1 takes about one hour for 7,000 data points while the proposed OMP takes only about two seconds for the same data set. We also evaluated uh, the proposed method on this task of uh, clustering phases under varying illumination. And uh, in this case, uh, the data set has 38 different individuals under 64 different lighting conditions. And the top table is showing the clustering accuracy for both methods. And the number of subjects varies here from 2 to the entire database of 38. And notice that the proposed method does a little bit worse for 2 or 10 subjects but it actually does better when the number of subjects is higher uh, and has the best accuracy among existing methods, but it does so uh, in about a hundred times faster than the previous L1 minimization algorithm. 
The other experiment uh, to which we applied uh, our method is uh, the MNIST data, uh, data set to classify images with different digits. Again, if you look at the clustering accuracy, uh, uh, we're varying the number of points from 500 to 60,000. And you can see that the uh, L1 minimization can handle only up to 6,000 digits, while this method gets to the entire training set of 60,000. The accuracy gets to be a about 94%. Again, you might say, well, isn't the case that for MNIST the accuracy is like 99.99? .99? Again, that's classification accuracy. Here we're doing an unsupervised task of just clustering, and notice that with a very simple and elegant geometric algorithm, we're able to just get about five points less in performance with no supervision whatsoever. Uh, at the same time, notice how the method is uh, significantly faster than the L1 minimization and about comparable, if not faster, than other faster alternatives that have uh, fewer theoretical guarantees. So, to summarize, uh, we have uh, studied the theory of orthogonal matching pursuit for the problem of subspace clustering. We have been able to demonstrate that the algorithm is guaranteed to give the correct connections with strong theoretical guarantees than prior work on OMP. And we have also, for the first time, demonstrated the performance of the method on very large scale data sets in computer vision, going from 10,000 to uh, about 500,000, as you will see in the next talk. Thank you.